Hi everybody and welcome to today's live feed where I'm going to talk about early rising in children over the age of one. Please pop your questions up only in relation to children who are waking up early before 6.40 a.m. in the age group of over one years. So please put, give us a thumbs up if you're watching and let us know where you're watching from. Please tag your friends if you know any friends who have children in this age bracket who need help with early rising. So if you were to contact me and say, if you were to contact me and say, I have a child who is waking up early. So <coughs> obviously you'd be following my routines and my routines are that you put your baby to bed at seven o'clock at night and you hope that they would sleep until seven o'clock in the morning. If your baby's going to bed at 7 o'clock at night, but waking early, so waking at, say, 6.40 a.m., we'd class that as not early. we class that as just, you know, a few minutes early, so before 6.40 a.m., so waking at 5.30, 5 o'clock, 5.30, this I would class as early rising. So we'd look at a few things. The first thing I'd look at is, are you following my routine? So in my routine, you would put your baby to bed at 7 o'clock at night, and expect your baby to wake up at seven o'clock in the morning, your toddler over one year old we're talking about. So <coughs> if it doesn't happen, why is it not happening? So we would look at a couple of things. We'd look at your bedtime ritual. Your bedtime ritual is the last 20 minutes before you put your toddler to bed. So what's happening in those last 20 minutes? We would ask you to make sure that your toddler is wide awake. Finish their breastfeed or their bottle feed if they're still having one at this age group. Some people say, my maternal child health nurse says to no longer breastfeed or bottle feed when they're over a year old. Well, this is because lots of people allow their child to fall asleep on the breast or fall asleep sucking on a bottle. Now, a lady called Claire Byron Cook once got in a lot of trouble in the UK because she said falling asleep breastfeeding or falling asleep sucking a bottle is the same as falling asleep drinking a glass of Coke without brushing your teeth. You need to brush their teeth. So this helps with the bedtime ritual because you give them their last milk feed, bottle or breast, at 6.40 at night. Now I'm saying it's okay to continue that breastfeed or bottle feed after a year old because you're following my routine, which includes a bedtime ritual and the bedtime ritual includes brushing your child's teeth. So they're not going to sleep having sucked and getting their mouth full of that sugary milk, breast milk or formula. So the last 20 minutes is the bedtime ritual. You want your child to be wide awake. So what you do is you play with them, let daddy run around with them or mummy run around with them, play with them, hype them up, make sure that they're having lots of active fun. Then just before it's time to put them into bed, you take them in the bathroom and you brush their teeth. You'll know they're wide awake because you're brushing their teeth. You'd hardly be able to brush their teeth if they were falling asleep. You then take them in the bedroom and say goodnight to some things like nanite to the cars outside or night to the trees. And you have this little ritual of saying goodnight to a few things and then it's time to get into bed. If at that point when you put them into bed, they don't settle, you then know that your bedtime ritual was the problem because if you start reading them a story on the sofa and they start falling asleep. You don't think they're falling asleep, but what happens is you're sitting on the sofa and you're reading them a story or you're sitting on a bed in their bedroom or on a beanbag on the floor or beanbag actually isn't safe in that age group. So I take that back because if they were on a beanbag, they could end up face down and suffocate. So no beanbags in this age group, but you're sitting on the floor with them, maybe on some floor cushions and you're reading them a book. You think they're wide awake, but their brain starts to think this book is my going to sleep aid. I'm thinking about the book just before I fall asleep. So their brain is tuned that reading the book is part of going to sleep. So you want to change that. You want them to be put into bed wide awake after the book so that the last thing they're thinking of when they fall asleep is something in the bed, like snuggling their comforter. Uh, this is a, a comforter, so you want them to fall asleep playing with their comforter. Lots in this age group will fall asleep doing this. You know, you'll see them doing this, you'll see them playing with the tag, you'll see them playing with the knots as they fall asleep. That's what you want them to be doing while they fall asleep. You don't want them to be sitting near you with you reading the story because what will happen is 
The last thing they're thinking of when they fall asleep is what they will need in order to stay asleep. So if, they, if their brain sees the book being read to them as their cue for bedtime, when they wake up at sleep cycles, we're talking about over one, so they'll wake up at nine, 11, th one, three, five o'clock. That's their sleep cycles. If they need, if they're reading a book when they start to get drowsy, they will need that book at each of those sleep cycles in order to get back to sleep. So the first thing we would look at in night wake, early rising in over ones is the bedtime ritual. If you think maybe your bedtime ritual is wrong, that's good because you can now put them into bed and follow my sleep and settling advice in my book for over ones, which does not involve controlled crime and you can teach them to sleep. So years ago when I used to go out to people's homes to teach their babies to sleep and stop them from early rising, the parents would say, oh no, no, they go to bed wide awake, they put themselves to sleep and then I'd get there and we'd look at the bedtime ritual and we would change the bedtime ritual and suddenly this child who used to go into bed and go straight to sleep would go into bed and kick up a fuss and I would think, great, fantastic, we have found the problem. The problem was the bedtime ritual. So that's the first thing we'd look at. The next thing I would look at in this age group is diet. Is your child eating the correct texture of food? One-year-olds should be eating for breakfast, a big bowl. Over ones can have kids' wheat bix, under ones can't. <coughs> so a big bowl of something like kids' wheat bix mixed with express breast milk or formula until they're 14 months. Over 14 months, you can introduce cow's milk or I recommend A2 milk, which is a whole other subject but I recommend milk that doesn't contain any A1, if possible, if your budget allows. So, for breakfast, big bowl of something like wheat bix mixed with some pureed fruit, mixed with infant formula, stage one, not stage two or three, because that causes night waking, and it's also been linked to diabetes and childhood obesity. Childhood diabetes and childhood obesity, so avoid stage two and stage three infant formulas. Breakfast, big bowl of wheat bix mixed with the type of milk your child has. Lunch, and then after that they should have a yogurt or some fruit. Then lunch they should be having a big bowl of something like shepherd's pie. Really, really well fork mashed, hand fed with you or for spoon. You should be getting about four spoonfuls in for each one spoon your child gets in. So, and the same for dinner. After they finish their thing like shepherd's pie or spaghetti bolognese that's been really well fork mashed, or you can use one of those... Tupperware have this fantastic chef chef helper that you pull, it's got a blade, you pull it, it can zap the bolognese, not to puree, but just to really well chopped. Something like that for lunch or fish pie or something, and the same for dinner. When they have finished this food, you then give them food off the family table, like bits of chicken to eat off uh, the drumstick, or you can give them a lamb chop, you can give them bits of your sandwich. But you would be amazed, a toddler of this age group, between say over ones and 18 months, two years, will eat the same amount of finger food, even if you give them the shepherd's pie or the mushed food first, as they would eat if you just give them the finger food. They're not old enough to have pure finger food. So diet is the next thing we'd look at. Now, if we knew that the diet was good and the bedtime ritual was good, I would look at, is your child cold? Now, a toddler needs to sleep on their back. So they should be sleeping on their back like this with their face and head uncovered. So I would expect your toddler, I would expect to find your toddler sleeping on their back like this in their cot. If your toddler is cold, they are going to flip to their tummy. They're going to put their hands under their chest and they're going to put their bottom in the air and sleep. Let me try and do this on the counter so that you can see the position. If your toddler is sleeping, sorry, I'm making you all seasick, sleeping like that, bottom in the air, hands underneath, face down in the mattress, your toddler is cold. So. That's the next thing I would look at. Is your toddler cold? If your toddler is sleeping in that position, your toddler is cold. And you need to change how your toddler is bedded, how much bedding you put on your toddler. It's very difficult at this time of year to get your toddler bedding right. So the other thing is, with the blankets, you want them right up under your toddler's chin, right up here. 
You don't want them down here. You want them right up under your toddler's chin. So coldness is the other thing that we'd look at in this age group. You'd be shocked at how many people come to the sleep clinic and all we do is change their bedding. We change the mattress protector to either no mattress protector or the Bambi Save Our Sleep brand of mattress protector. And we add blankets on. Now, in Victoria at the moment, last night was very hot. Kieron is two and a half. His bedroom was 26 degrees when I put him to bed last night. I had the correct mattress protector and then he was in a long sleeved bodysuit, his normal long sleeve pajamas. He was then in a 2.5 tog sleeping bag, a sheet and eight blankets. People, cotton or bamboo blankets, people underestimate how much bedding little ones need to stay safely on their back. As soon as I take some of those blankets off, he will flip to his tummy. He's two and a half years old and I still like him sleeping on his back. So I make sure I have the correct bedding. So we would look at this age group for early rising. The uh, bedding, the hunger and the bedtime ritual, right? So if we've covered all of these things and your toddler is sleeping on their back with their face and head uncovered, why are they then early rising? Well, the early rising, it could be because of the time of their first sleep of the day. So let me explain this to you. When you put your toddler to bed, over one is a very tricky age group. Some over one year olds need one sleep during the day, some need two. Let's say you have a toddler who seems to need to go to bed at 10 o'clock in the morning for an hour and a half, and then three o'clock in the afternoon for 45 minutes, right? What happens is, the morning sleep gets later and longer and the afternoon sleep gets later, it turns into a nap eventually and then disappears. A nap is 40 minutes or less, a sleep is about an hour or longer. So the time of that first sleep in the morning can affect the wake up time the next day. So if you're putting a toddler to bed, let's say a one year old goes to bed at 10 o'clock in the morning and they sleep for two hours, so 10 till 12, and then let's say you're putting them back to bed 12, one, two, three, they go back at 3.30, let's say, and you wake them up at four. You put them to bed at seven o'clock at night, and they're waking at 6.30 in the morning. I would say that their morning sleep is too early. Now, this is if we've covered everything else. So we've covered, are they warm enough? We've covered their diet. We've covered the mattress protector you're using. We've covered everything else. So. I would say let's move this toddler's sleep time to 10.20 in the morning. Believe it or not, if we move their sleep time to 10.20, they now wake at seven. That time of the morning sleep, for some reason, and I don't know why, but I know it happens, it affects their wake up time the next morning. So if you put them to bed at 10.20 instead of 10 o'clock, you might get a seven o'clock wake up. Again, it might be that your toddler goes to bed at 11.30. If we change that to 12 o'clock, you might suddenly get a seven o'clock wake time. So that's a really important point. Now, the other thing that we need to look at is, I just need to explain how the nighttime sleep cycles work. So if you're putting your child to bed at seven o'clock at night and they're over one, they will go to bed at seven and they will wake at nine. They'll look around the room. If everything's exactly the same, they'll go back to sleep. They will then wake at 11, have a bit of a look around, everything's exactly the same, go back to sleep. This happens again at 1, 3. At 5 a.m., they'll wake up, have a bit of a look around. It's a bit dark still, there's no birds singing. They're going to have a look around, go back to sleep. If you put that same toddler to bed at 7.30 at night, that 5 o'clock in the morning wake becomes a 7.30 in the morning, or 5 o'clock in the morning, the five o'clock in the morning wake becomes a 5.30 a.m. wake. At 5.30 a.m., they've had two hours less sleep than the baby that went to bed at seven o'clock at night because at 5.30 they wake up, look around the room, and their child, eat, the birds might be singing, they might see light coming through the window, and they go, oh, wow, it's time to start the day. So the time you put them to bed is the time that can affect their wake up time due to sleep cycles. You might have a younger child, you might have a child of six months who sleeps 12 hours at night but wakes up during the, sleeps 12 hours at night but catnaps during the day and you might think that's okay but I can pretty much guarantee you that your six month old when they start sleeping in nighttime sleep cycles will start catnapping at night which is waking every couple of hours at night. Now I'm just going to have a look at the questions and see if there's any questions that I can quickly cover for you. Jessica says, hi Lizzie, yep, 
it's tizzy, but that's okay. Hi, Lizzie. I have a two and a half year old that wakes around 6 a.m., but not all the time. So with your two and a half year old, it might be that some days she goes to daycare or it might be that some days you're out in the car and she falls asleep before that magic sleep time in the morning. So it might be that your two and a half year old doesn't need to go to sleep for its day nap until 2 p.m. But some days you're out and about. If you kept a diary, you might find that the 6 a.m. wake ups are days when your toddler has fallen asleep in the car at, say, 10 o'clock or 1030. Uh, Anne-Louise says... <coughs> Excuse me, coughing. Anne Louise says, my two and a half year old goes to bed at seven every night, but wakes at 5.30 a.m. wide awake and can't resettle. He wears long sleeved PJs and kicks off his bedding. So I'm not sure how to keep him warm. He eats well during the day and hunger shouldn't be the reason I'm lost. Well, I would be looking at your mattress protector and then your sheets, make sure they're correct. And then I would be using a 2.5 tog sleeping bag over the PJs, etc., or if they're in bed, the same if they're in a bed, not a cot, the same thing. Put the sleeping bag on in the bed, and that will help your toddler stay warmer. 5 30 a.m., though, it also could be the time of your two and a half year old's daytime sleep, so I would also look at your daytime sleep, Anne Louise. I think I've covered a lot of that in what I talked about. Uh, Naomi says, let me just get the rest of her comment, says, my 17-month-old follows your routines, goes to bed at 7 p.m., wakes anywhere between 6 and 6.45 every day, but I leave for work two days a week at 6.30. <coughs> so I see this as being okay. When I don't work, she will wake between these times. Is this okay? Well, your 17-month-old really needs to be getting 12 hours sleep at night. So if they have to get up between 6 and 6.45, I would be putting them to bed, say, at 6.30 at night rather than 7 o'clock to try and get the 12 hours. It is okay. It's not a problem if you're happy with it. But or else your child needs a bigger day sleep to make up for the early waking. If you're happy with it, it's not a problem. I wouldn't worry about it. Uh, Jackie says, thanks, her answer to her problem is a bedtime ritual. Katie says, so if we're taking... If they're taking up to 40 minutes to settle at 7 p.m., is this related to the bedtime ritual? No. If your child is taking 40, if your child's taking 40 minutes to go to sleep at 7 p.m., I would say that they're sleeping too long in the day. So I would say that their day sleep is too long or too late. Now, if you're pregnant or you have a new baby, then this this is all right because. If you need a break during the day and to have a sleep yourself or to try and have a rest or even to get some jobs done because you need that time to get jobs done and you're putting your child to bed at seven o'clock at night and your child's taking 40 minutes to self-settle, if they're happy in their cot just playing with their comforter or chatting, it's not a problem. Sometimes giving your child a giving yourself a break during the day from your child is more important than them settling at 7 p.m. at night. However, if they're waking at 5.30 in the morning, it is a problem. Or if they're screaming and crying for 40 minutes, it's a problem. If they're in the cot happy, just not settling till 7.40, it's not a problem. Bernard and uh, and Sarah Ann, I think that's, or oh, Ben and Sarah Ann, sorry, my iPad's a bit far away and I need my glasses on, say, hi Tizzy, our three-year-old three wakes at 5.20, 5.30 most mornings. We keep his room at 20 to 22 degrees. We follow your routine. We do not read in bed and he does not have anything in bed with him besides a comforter. Help. Well, I would be looking at his bedding. I'd also be looking at his daytime sleep. If he's waking at 5.20 or 5.30, is he having a daytime sleep? If so, make it an hour later to see if that fixes the problem. And if that doesn't fix the problem, try and make it shorter. And that should fix the problem for you. And if not, go back over what I was saying. Re-listen to the feed about food, diet, the different milks, etc. Now, Rebecca Kelly says... Tizzy with a Y, which I'm not, I'm not in a tizzy, I'm tizzy, i.e. Tizzy, she says, tizzy, toddler is out to sleep, toddler is, must be put, it's a typo, toddler is put to sleep under blankets, but he's been protesting and by the time he's asleep, he's out of them. 
upside down on top of the blankets. Would you just move him and adjust the blankets once he's asleep? I haven't been game to do this. Yes, I would. I would wait till he's asleep. I'd wait 10 minutes as it states in the book. Then I would go in. I would lift him up slightly, pull all the blankets out from underneath him, roll him to his back so he's in the safe sleeping position of on his back with his face and head uncovered, and I would put the blankets over him and I would cocoon the blankets, so push the blankets in round his sides so that no cold air can go in. Right, I'm just going to take two more questions for today. So, let's see the next is... Uh, Natalie says that her catnapping six-month-old help. Well, we'll do another one on catnapping. We have done some on catnapping in the past, Natalie, if you want to go back and listen to them. Oh, Jessica says, sorry, I spelled your name wrong. It's uh, It automatically changed your name to Lizzie. Yes, I know it does, Jessica. And I also know it automatically changes my name to Tizzy with a Y, which is funny because I'm not in a Tizzy. I'm just Tizzy. Anyhow, Belinda says, we haven't changed the bedtime ritual with her 22-month-old. He sleeps 1.30 to 1.45 to 3, but he's taking up to an hour to go to sleep at night. Well, I sort of covered that a minute ago. It's not a problem if he's happy in his bed. If he's not happy in his bed, then I would change his wake-up time to 2.30 instead of 3 o'clock. So that's all I'm going to take now in the way of questions. I wanted to point out to you that these Hatley baby grows are great because without the feet, it means that you can put them on your child for longer so you can have you know a much bigger size and put on your child and pull it up around here and pull it up around the the wrist so you can buy much larger and just pull them up because this is quite firm and you can pull it up and have a much larger size and they can have their feet free which is great at this time of year so when you get them up out of the cot they're able to walk around so that's our Hatley PJs which I happened to just see on the doll and thought I'd point out because as you can see this doll is in a much larger size than what she needs, but what's great about these is you can buy the larger size and pull them up. So thank you for tuning in, and I will try and do another live feed soon. Thank you. Bye.